Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bass, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. There's only a few interviews each year I look forward to. This is one of them. It's our annual sit-down with Mr. Phil Tillman, the father of 101. Welcome, Phil. Nice to see you, Greg. Thanks for inviting me. I well, appreciate it. Well, you know, it was seven years ago uh, this no. week that I was sitting over there and you made the announcement that I would be the new host of One on One. Seven years. Seven years, about 350 shows ago for me. Yeah. Uh, but you had done more than 600, 700 shows before that. I don't I remember the number, but it was a lot, <laughs> a lot of people. And, uh, and as you know, one of the big, the big challenges of One on One is to get interesting guests, up-to-date guests. And uh, so... Why you chose me, I don't know. But anyhow. Well, because uh, when I'm in the grocery store, the, the question I get all the time is, how's Mr. Tillman? How's Mr. Tillman? So I used to try to explain to people how Mr. Tillman was. And uh -huh. now I just say, he'll be on in December. You can watch you it. You can then. watch it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Phil Tillman is doing good. He's um, doing good? I'm very happy. Um, I will celebrate my 80th birthday oh, in a my couple of months. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, Phil. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, what, the, what they have in mind for that, I don't know. But anyway, the family. As you know, my three children all live here in Salisbury. So we are really blessed when it comes to having our family around us here on holidays and that sort of thing. But anyway, life is good. Well, I just want to say in terms of your service in government, you were on the county council for a long time. You've been involved in pretty much everything that goes on here at one point or another as a leader and as a cheerleader, as a supporter. Um, but I've really enjoyed watching you on the, uh, uh, the Charter Review Committee in the last year. And I was talking to somebody about this recently, like, you know, what's it, what's it like having Phil on there? And they said, Phil is just, he's wise. He's like the wise man in the room. He understands the Robert's Rules of Order. He knows how to ask a question, make an amendment, make a motion. And you've really shown great leadership on this committee, on this commission. Well, thank you for whoever said that, and thank you for mentioning it, but uh, it's been an interesting experience. There's 15 of us who were appointed by the county council. I think Bill McCain appointed me, um, or put my name forward, the whole council. Right. Appointed. Anyway, um, and we, we have Mike Dunn as our chair, and uh, Bob Benson is vice chair, and it's, golly, Dave, we've been meeting, I don't know, probably 15 or 20 times uh, and two hour sessions and we're just about finished. Interestingly, one of the first questions was, would we, would we want to suggest to the county council that they put it on the ballot to reconsider having a county executive form of government? And of course that begs the question, well, how well served have we been by a county executive form of government? And we can all point to some failures and some shortcomings uh, in that. But you don't, and with the old, you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Right. And you don't, um, you don't go against the wishes of the electorate. Right. In Wicomico County, who overwhelmingly uh, voted to have a county executive form of government. So the challenge is make it work. So what we have done is taking taken a uh, group, I think there were 40-some uh, suggestions that the county council made. Well, this has happened over the last four years or the last... And let me interject. Years. I think a lot of those assertions that they wanted were very self-serving to their power grid, but go ahead. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know, there, there have been some problems on both sides. The, yeah. the, the county council has struggled with the definition of the legislative branch of government since we came up with this uh, form of government called county executive. And it's a powerful county executive, and that's the way it was designed. Right. And uh, the county council has kind of sat there saying, well, what do we do with legislating? we got to meet twice a week, twice a month, and what are we going to do? Um, and they've, they've tried to meddle it from time to time. Uh, and that's, that's natural, I'm sure. It's probably any legislative body is going to try to get into the executive right. function once in a while. But it's happened a lot. A few <laughs> too many times. Right. But the, the executive also kind of invited it to happen by Absolutely. not being... Just asked for it. Exactly. Uh, they, I, I threw you off the list. They had, they had a, off your point, they had a punch list of things they wanted you guys to tackle. Right. And it was tried to, well, how, how can the 
how can we with the charter solve this problem? And really what it mean, what they were saying was, how can, how can the charter legislate good character right. in government? Right. And you can't. You can, all you can do is say, uh, encourage uh, the electorate to say uh, to leaders, leaders, natural leaders in the community, in the business community and education and everything else, step up the plate and get up there and say, I'm willing to put my name out there and, and run for public office. And um, that goes for the school board. We now have an electric school, elected school board. Don Hamlin is leaving, um, which is a, a tremendous loss. You can't have her forever. Right. Um, but the, the Board of Education is a, is a very important function, uh, educating our kids. That's what we spend half of our county dollars, tax dollars on, is educating public education. And uh, so we need good people to step forward. Yeah, well, you, uh, you, well, you look at Salisbury, you know, it has the strong mayor form of government. Uh, for a while there, there was a movement to go to city manager uh, council form of government because there was just like people were critical of the mayor, so they wanted to change the system. Right. But, but now there's no discussion about that because you've got the right personality in exactly. there to lead things. And I think the same thing would happen with county executive. If the right personality is there, uh, then there, there aren't these questions about what the county executive can do and cannot do. Right. We did, we did one of the suggestions we're going to make to the county council, and the county council takes the re report from the charter review. And then they say, okay, we're going to take this, this, and this and put it on the ballot. Because it all has to be approved right. uh, on, a, on the next ballot. Uh, or, or they could not put it on the ballot at all if they want to, whatever they want to do. It's their choice. They appointed us. It's their authority. They're the elected people. And, and rightfully so. So we'll see what goes on the ballot. One of the things, the, the strong suggestion we made was to increase the salary of the county executive. Uh, right, as you know, the acting county executive, they had to make a special, because he was making more as the administrative director than right. he would have to take the position. Right. Um, so anyway, and I understand he is, uh, John Pesota is one of the candidates. Yes. Uh, he's uh, declared that he's gonna run for the position, and good for him. And uh, I hope we have a, a good, intelligent, person of good character, and I keep saying good character because that really, character counts. And uh, if you have people who have the right motivation in mind, then things will fall in place. There have been a lot of really good county employees who are no longer employed by the county. Right. I think he's like 40, 45. Right. Um, who just left for one reason or another over the last four or five years. Some were actually asked to leave. They were doing they were doing a good job, but they were asked to leave for one reason or another. A lot of it was personal, and uh, that's 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 not good. That doesn't bode well for our county. I just saw where um, somebody from the state had come down and talked to talk about the flooding. It, it was in the, the Bay to Bay news, I read. <laughs> this, in the Salisbury Independent, uh, Chris and, Van Hollen, our senator, and, was here. Yeah, and walked around the town with the mayor. Right. And, um, you know, you just you just have a good feeling about the, the way the city is run with the chief of police, the fire chief, the mayor, the way the mayor and the city council work in in. Not in lockstep, but they yeah, certainly... Yeah, they don't rubber stamp them. They no, have their they reputation, don't. but no. they do not. No, and uh, but they're, they're working together. They're all... If, <laughs> what's the old saying? If you, if you get six mules and point them all in the same direction, they can pull a big load. Well, everybody's pulling in the same direction in the, in the city government, and I think they're, they're putting a good example for county, what county government could... You, how it could work. Um, and... So we'll see what happens with the next ballot, what changes need to be made. But it's the change in personnel. Right. In my opinion, more than anything else, we need good people on the county council right. and in the county executive um, office. There's a lot in Wicomico County we have to be proud of. Um, and the education, our kids are going to school uh, despite all the, the 
COVID problems and everything else. And I've got teachers in the family who are right. in the system, and it's working. So the um, somebody somebody made the statement in the uh, charter review said it, it didn't work, and I said no, it did work. You know, it didn't work the way people thought it should work when they appointed the uh, doctor. Right. To be, to be. I, I've blocked all that out. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, and then, then he realized, gosh, I have to give up this lucrative practice yeah, this in order is hard to work. take this $80,000 hard working job yeah. and, and didn't do it. So the, the answer, was, the statement was, well, the system didn't work. Well, it did work. He stepped back and the county council put somebody else in that, in that position acting Okay, it's acting, so, but it's, the county government's still working. When you run the county council, uh, Matt Kramer was the county administrator. What was that relationship like? That, um, Matt Kramer was uh, extremely capable, is an extremely capable individual. And in, at the end of the day, he knew who his bosses were. He, need, he needed the four <laughs> Right, bills. right. He, and, uh, but... Uh, he was working on it day to day. The rest of us were, were doing it part time, and uh, we leaned heavily on Matt Kramer and Ted Shea and um, Joe Schiller. Right, Joe Schiller. Yeah. The, the three of them used to sit in every budget session that that we had, and um, so anyway, um, yes, uh, he did a good job. I can't remember hardly any any conflicts with him. It's interesting to know that I was there 16 years and he was there the entire time. At the end of the 16 years, one time somebody said, is Matt Kramer a Democrat or a Republican? I said, you know what? I don't know. And he made sure that you didn't know. Right. Um, very capable individual. And uh, he's, I think he still occasionally does some consulting work with county governments around the state. Right. Uh, he was doing. And he's... He's a good guy. During the history column every week, there uh, there were times when you were the swing vote. Absolutely. And, and you used to vote last, and you were under a lot of pressure on some of these votes. The biggest... <laughs> it didn't mount to a hell of beans, but... The, it was silly in the long term, the, but go ahead, sorry. The question, <laughs> the question of naming Nanticoke Road instead of Quantico Road. People are still mad about that oh, film. Oh, my land. That is, there's, well, most of the people who for a while wouldn't speak to me... Uh, <laughs> They, now, now, they, this, they, now, the road needed to be renamed for the 911 system. There was an opportunity. The road doesn't go to Quantico. It goes to Nanticoke. The road from Hebron goes to Quantico, and that's now Quantico Road. But anyway, right. people were just upset. They didn't want to live on Nanticoke Road. They wanted to live on Quantico Road like there's a difference. Right, right. <laughs> and and it, uh, we, were, we were getting ready. To, we were in the back room. We'd get ready to walk into the council chambers. And uh, Rusty Molner came to me. He said, you know, John Long is on the other side of this issue. He said, I'm going to have to vote with him. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, that makes it three to three. Yeah. And I knew I was going to have to decide. So I'm sitting there, you know, with sweat marks. <laughs> on him. The room was packed and it came down to the last vote. So I said, I've got some friends are going to be happy with me. Some are not going to be happy, but I vote what I thought was the logical, the only logical reason to right. vote I could make. And the fire company and everybody. But anyway, we need, don't need to go into that. The fire but company it, wanted it. It came down. Yeah. The fire company did not want oh, they did not. a 911 call to come in for Quantico Road. Right. Which would go from Spring Hill Church all the way through Hebron, all the way to Quantico, right. and then back into Salisbury. <laughs> right. And the guys, I'm, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> And I'm on Quantico Road. Click up. Where? What are you gonna, <laughs> you're going to drive eight miles yeah. of road on different parts of the road. And different fire companies would, would right. have. Anyway. Do you think about that now? Because you drive down Nanticoke Road every day and turn right to go home. I don't think about it anymore. <laughs> no, I, I, I used to think about it a lot. I remember, anyway, it, it, was, it was interesting. Yeah. Decide by one vote, but one vote is, the, as with the the question of whether or not um, Harmon Field is going to be exactly used for what use it's going to have, and it was it was four to three, but the majority. Uh, anyway, 
Yeah, it was four to three for a while, but in the end, they all flipped their votes around, so it ended up being six one or six abstain. Oh, did it? Yeah. yeah. In the yeah. in the final vote. Yeah. You know, so that's what what history will show. But the workings up leading up to it, it was definitely a four to three situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's is often the case. You know. Did you have an opinion about Harmon Field? No, well, I'm very supportive of pickleball. I could see you being a pickleball guy. Well, if you don't want to move very fast. <laughs> No, we have pickleball down at Green Hill, right? And it's, it's very popular, right? Very popular. Yeah, I, I've never played a game in my life, but uh, if if it's that popular, do it. For years, when I was on the county council, we tried to expand the number of tennis courts in the county because tennis was we were huge. All, we were all trained in tennis when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tennis Town USA, right? That's what we all did. We all played tennis. Yeah. You had Marty Neat on recently. Yes. And I went to his retirement. And I bring this up because we talk about good people in government. And hopefully Marty's not finished his service to Wycombe County. But anyway, um, the number of things that guy has done in his life. First of all, he points out he worked for an institution, First Shore Federal, whose board support, supported his community activity. Um, but my land, the hospital, the, the community foundation, the Eastern Shore, the United Way, Salisbury Neighborhood Housing, I don't know the number of things that right. he led. I mean, he wasn't just on the board. He led those boards. YMCA, and, the zoo. Oh, yeah. Oh, the zoo. But, but Phil, yeah. you're the same way. Well, I admire somebody who steps up to the plate, and but Marty helps me make my point that those are the kinds of people, and they're out there. They're involved in the Chamber of Commerce right now. The Greater Salisbury Committee is another um, in business, uh, you know, doing whatever they do in their business organizations, um, developing leadership skills. And um, those are the type of people that we need to say, come on, or we need to encourage somebody like that. Have you ever? Joe, have you ever thought, Greg, have you ever thought about running for right. for the school board, for, for some public office where you can, where your good sense can do some good? Well, I, I feel like that's who you've been. Like, you haven't really sought out this stuff that people have kind of forced it on you. It's been not bestowed upon you, but you've been, you know, volunteered to do, to do a lot of the community service stuff. Well, when we moved, uh, Carol and I were met in Washington College. We graduated June 6th. We were married June 20th and moved to Salisbury that, that next week. And uh, Carol said she knew one thing that when we came here that I was going to get involved in things. And the first thing I got involved with was JC's. Right. And that was the organization for young men right. at that time. Uh, at one time, I think the city council and the county council Almost every single member was a former JC, uh, including Henry Parker. Well, right. We Henry. That's a good name to mention because uh, every time I go by the Henry Parker Park, I think of my good old friend and my mentor, Henry S. Parker, and I'm glad that the uh, the county was wise enough to name that in in his honor. When I would sit there in the park watching my kids play soccer or lacrosse. I would think, Mr. Henry, if he could see this, he would just be breaking down in tears. He would not even comprehend that something like this is named for him. I know. I took some pictures and I sent them to Gary Mackis, who now lives in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, he was up here for the 75th, right, he was. Yeah. 75th anniversary <laughs> of uh, recreation in parks. 75 years, there's only been, t there were two. Right. Uh, now that we have this. Steve Miller. Steve Miller, who's... A, Another good, isn't he great? Good county yeah. employee and devoted, and he's. That's the kind of people we need employed by the county in in every function. And there are there are a lot of good ones still there. I'm not saying they're all gone, right? But a lot of them are gone, and uh, we we can we can do better if the atmosphere is better, if the if the leadership is is supportive of those people who are out there in the trenches every day and in the finance office every day, um, then good people will stay there and be attracted to those positions. Because it's still, working for Wycombe County is a, is a good job. 
Well, you know, not, not to defend the Minnesota, but one of the things that could be a campaign issue is that there are some open spots in the executive branch, and one of those is the public works director. Mm -hmm. So I had someone tell me recently that they can't get uh, a plan approved down in Hanacook, of all places, uh, to have their house lifted because there's no public works director to, to manage it or sign off on it. I'm sure that's more complicated than that. But the problem is, with the tension with the county, with Mr. Pesota being acting, with the election coming, if you're an engineer and you've got a good job making a lot of money, you're not going to risk that to, to walk into this situation because there's too much unknown too much unknown in the county government right, right now. Right. And, and it's a shame that that's the situation that we're in. So there was a lot of harmonious talk this week in terms of the new council leadership. Everyone said the right stuff on Tuesday night. Maybe things will go forward. But, but with oh, an cool. election coming up, I just have a feeling it won't. Well, um, we'll see. We'll see. And uh, hopefully some good people will run for those offices. Um, I'm not saying the current members of the county council, I would want them to be defeated, but there are a few that uh, we, could, we could do a lot better. So anyway, and uh, some people might say, well, we could do better than John Pesota. I'm not sure that's the case. But uh, we'll see. We'll see who will listen to Ernie Davis and uh, this new, what's her name, Giordano. Uh, Julie, Julie Giordano. Yeah, yeah, she's the other I don't candidate. I her. She's a, she's a teacher, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, but we'll listen to her and see what she has to say, and, and the electorate will make up their mind. Do you remember the first time we ever met? No. <laughs> it was 1987. Uh, I was back, you know, I was 26, back as a reporter, and I got sent, I covered Delaware then, and I got sent to cover, um, they were going to build this new thing in Salisbury called, called the Port of Salisbury Marina. And because I'm wrong about everything, I'm like, this is never going to work. And they just torn down, ironically, the old Tillman Fertilizer Building uh, there on um, yeah. Fitzwater, Fitzwater Street. Street. Uh, and they were going to put a marina in there, like, yeah, good luck with this thing. And I was standing there waiting to you know, to cover this announcement or a press conference or whatever. And you got out of your car and you walked directly to me and you said, hi, I'm Phil Tillman. I understand you're with the Daily Times. I'm on the county council. And it was just the nicest thing in the world that you would like sought me out and wanted to know who I was. Now you're suspicious because you wanted to make sure I was going to write the right stuff. I know that. But you made me feel so at ease covering this group that I didn't really know who the people were. But you know, the usuals were there, Betty Gardner and Julia was there, and uh, Paul Martin was there. I mean, the, the, the regular cast of characters. But it was just so impressive, and I just can't believe it's whatever it is, 37, 38 years later. Mm. And here we are, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> In seven years, you've been doing this show. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. You know, time, <laughs> time really goes quickly, doesn't it? As you know, when they send you to interview school, uh, the first rule is, did you go to interview school? No. I didn't either. The first rule, though, is uh, you have to make the guest look good. And having you on is just so easy because I don't have to do anything to make you look good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. No, it's true. Yeah. It's, I just dispense truth. That's all I can do. I, I thought I was going to say I was nice to you back then because I thought you might buy fuel oil from me. <laughs> And you do. <laughs> I do. I am a customer. I'm in, in slightly in arrears right now, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. <laughs> oh, my. Well, I'm, uh, we're talking about people is what we're talking about. And uh, I was thinking about this when, when uh, I watched your interview with, with uh, Marty Neat. And I thought of the community leaders we've had and still do. Um, who have made a difference, and and there's just so so many. Um, we you know we could talk about the Henry Parkers and the Jack Morrises and the Frank Morrises and all those people. I it was I shouldn't have started this without thinking of it in advance, but uh, there's just a lot of people who have stepped up to the plate. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, I I wanted to criticize Marty at one point because he was talking about. Yeah, you know, uh, Mr. Henson and Mr. Burdu and you know Mr. Hazel. I was like, well, they're all rich guys. They've got nothing better to do than give money away. They're gonna they're gonna look powerful and important just just from that. But people like you, Marty, you're having to you're in the down in the trenches. You're doing the work. Same with you, Phil. You were in there. Your work with the Salvation Army alone uh, was, it's just been amazing. Well, Warwick Community and, College, amazing. I I, lo I love both of those institutions. And incidentally, I'll brag my. 
granddaughter is a recent graduate of the nursing program. Excellent. She's a registered nurse, and she's working in the psychiatric unit at PRMC. Well, I'm sure I'll be Tyler seeing her Hill. soon. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and she loves it. She loves it. But she was, she was, uh, she went to West Virginia for a semester and a half in the pre-nursing program, and she happened to meet somebody from Warwick uh, at Christmas time while she was home and convinced her that she could go there and in two years be a registered nurse. So she decided to do that. And of course, my son was ecstatic because it saved him $17,000 <laughs> in tuition and room and board at, at, at West Virginia. Right. Um, but anyhow, uh, Warwick, oh, my golly. How lucky are we? And they say lucky. No, people like you built it. It's not luck. There's energy that was applied to that thing. I remember when I was on the site selection committee for Warwick Community College when we used to brag about the college without the walls. Yeah. Because you may as well brag about it. It, it was a deficit, but you may as well brag about it. Right. Make it sound like it was, a, it was in this storefront yeah, and that storefront. Yeah, classes and, and shopping centers all over town. Arnold yeah. Maynard and uh, Frank Morris and Bob Lawrence and myself and a fellow Bob something from uh, Worcester County uh, was on this site selection. And we met seven o'clock in the morning, for, I don't know, for six months or so. And we were looking for sites that would be either close to the e east side of Wycombe County or Salisbury so that Worcester County st students wouldn't have that far to go. And uh, we, we came very close into se selecting a place on Snow Hill Road on the corner of the bypass at Snow Hill Road. And then Madeline Purdue's property uh, came up and she was very willing to sell it to us. And uh, uh, so anyway, that was the site selection, but uh, I remember that. And then when we, they started building and they used those yellow bricks. Right. And everybody, my gosh, what the hell is that? That doesn't look like a, <laughs> that doesn't look like a college building. But you know, today, it it with all the landscaping and everything, beautiful. it's beautiful. Yeah. And it if it was br if it was red brick, maybe it would look too much like SU or yeah. UMES or something like that. I like well, that. and now the city is is working on new uh, uh, arrival signs, like welcome to Salisbury signs. And they're going to put the big one right there at Warwick at that intersection. So oh, when, good. You, when you hit that intersection at Warwick, that's where Salisbury will begin. And it used to be that was out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Right. But now that's where Salisbury begins. And where Salisbury City and Water and Sewer go. Exactly. So, Phil, we're thrilled you're here today. Uh, we, you do a Christmas message for us every year. Do you want to say something to your fans out there, people who love you way more than they love me? Well, I'm like you. <laughs> I, I very seldom wear a tie. But this is the season for me to wear my Christmas tie so that I can come in here and say to you, Merry Christmas to Thank you, you Greg, Phil. and to Tom and everybody here at this wonderful organization known as PAC-14, and to everybody in the audience. Merry Christmas for you, to you, from all of us right here on PAC-14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.